Welcome to this overview and how to video of Auto Flight Logic's new application called AutoFrame for the Osmo from DJI. In this video, I'm going to introduce AutoFrame and explain why it's a must have application if you own an Osmo. If you have an Osmo, you know what a great tool it is to capture smooth, handheld video. AutoFrame is a standalone application by the same company that brought you Autopilot and Airspace that will inexpensively and easily allow you to further take advantage of your Osmo. I'm going to take you through the shots that make AutoFrame unique and then hint at some of the new features that are coming that will further build on top of this. AutoFrame currently thrives on three unique shots with more planned for the future. First, maintaining horizontal and vertical framing and focus on a GPS point of interest. Second, maintaining automated framing and focus on a moving object or objects carrying an external GPS device like an iPhone. And third, maintaining automated frame and focus on a DJI quadcopter such as a Phantom 3 or 4 or an Inspire 1. I'm going to first demonstrate what each of these shots are and then show you how easy it is to do them. Let's start with maintaining focus on a point of interest or POI. Let's assume that I wanted to maintain focus on this statue but using the DJI app. If I walk but don't twist my wrist and look at the screen, the statue is going to move out of center or possibly out of frame. Now if I do twist my wrist, or even use the joystick of the Osmo, I can keep the statue center and frame, but this requires me to look at the screen at all times. The Osmo does have a trigger lock, and if I hold the trigger and stay in the same place, I can move around and the camera will maintain focus on the statue. However, if I move from this location, I'm going to have the exact same problem with the statue getting out of shot. If I switch to auto frame and define the statue as a point of interest, even if I walk around like this, even 360 degrees, auto frame will yaw the camera around and maintain focus upon the statue no matter where I go. You can even define focus on a point above ground and use the Osmo to maintain focus and framing. The second shot takes advantage of Auto Flight Logic's airspace to allow you to have your Osmo automatically track a moving object while your Osmo is being held, or more ideally, being held within a tripod. You can even define multiple objects for your Osmo to track and easily swap between them. From a technology perspective, the third shot is very similar to the second shot. Again, we're going to take advantage of Autopilot and airspace to allow you to track a moving DJI quadcopter. Regardless of where you fly, the Osmo will adjust and keep the quad in frame. Often you'll need to record in 4K and then zoom in to get a better quality uh, image of your quadcopter. Before I show you how to do one of these specific shots, I'm going to quickly review what you need to get started, some things to keep in mind, and provide a quick overview of the user interface. To get started with AutoFrame, at a minimum, you're going to need an iPhone with both a GPS and a compass. They are both needed to help out AutoFrame know where you are and which way you are facing. It's for this reason that unless you can securely mount your iPad to your Osmo, we don't recommend using an iPad with AutoFrame. Obviously, you're going to need a connected Osmo and a licensed copy of the AutoFrame app. I'd recommend shutting down all applications that might be using memory as AutoFrame can be memory intensive. If you're looking to have AutoFrame track your movement, a tripod or Osmo stand is a useful thing to have. Before you get started, I recommend creating an AutoFlight Logic account specific for AutoFrame. Even if you have an existing account for AutoPilot, currently you'll need to create a separate account for AutoFrame. The good news is that you can actually use the same username or email address and even the same password with AutoFrame. This is because the two products are run on two different servers. Creating an account is easy. From the AutoFrame main menu, press Menu, then Account, and then press on Sign Up. You'll be prompted to enter in an email address, a password, and your first name, and you'll be good to go from that point forward. If you are going to do the second or third types of shots, 
you're going to need additional iPhones or iOS devices with a GPS signal. They can be running a paid copy of Autopilot or the free Airspace application. One other note, realize that AutoFrame is fully dependent upon the accuracy of the GPS signal. It won't work inside and typically won't work if the two devices are very close to each other. And this is from my experience less than 15 to 20 feet apart. Let's quickly show the UI. In the left corner is the map. You can make the map full screen or minimize it so you have the full screen for video. In the lower right hand corner, there is a button for menu and a separate button for settings, a gear button. Menu is useful to see the documentation, set up your account, and to record your screen. The settings gear allows you to further configure auto frame as well as access camera settings. In the top right corner is airspace. I'll go into this more when we go over the last two types of shots. Regardless of the shot you are using, there are a few steps that I recommend you go through each time to maximize the effectiveness of auto frame. First, because if you're moving, auto frame requires an accurate compass reading, it's not a bad idea to do some figure eights with your iPhone before you mount it to the Osmo. Next, realize that you must mount your iPhone to the Osmo. We have found that the compass works best with Osmo if the iPhone's home button is located closest to the Osmo. Next, turn on your Osmo and then check your iPhone settings to make sure that the iPhone is connected to the Osmo's net network. After you've shut down all the other applications, I recommend starting a DJI GO app to ensure that you have video connectivity to the Osmo. Once you do, you can press the home button and start the auto frame app. You can now close out the DJI GO app if you want, but I found that this doesn't have a big impact either way. If auto frame is running and you have video signal, you should be good to go. Let's start with a simple POI example where I want to focus at the front of this building. I'm going to get in my car and drive around while holding the Osmo out the driver's side window, but I'm not going to have to worry about pointing the camera to frame the shot. At this point, assume I've done everything previously described. I've checked the compass, I've shut down the other applications, I've turned on the Osmo, I've connected to the Osmo network, I've opened up the DJI app and confirmed that I have video connectivity, and then hit the home button and opened up the frame, the auto frame application, and again confirmed that I have video connectivity and auto frame. At that point, I'm going to take my screen and make it full screen so I can more easily find my point of interest. I then press and hold where I want the camera to focus or be framed. Oops, a little bit off, so I'm going to adjust it by dragging and dropping the point of interest or clicking on a new POI. And that's it. The Osmo should immediately start to point at the, uh, the entrance to the building. If you're not seeing this, you can try moving around a little bit to ensure that your phone is getting a good GPS signal and a proper, proper compass reading. If I want to have it switch to a different location, just point and click on the map and the Osmo will immediately start tracking that different location. In this case, this uh, slide here at the pool. Let's do a different example, this time focusing on an object that is not easily seen on the Google map. We'll go back to that statue example I showed earlier. The easiest way to allow auto frame to lock in an, on a location like this is to walk up to the object and press on the map on the dot that shows your current location, ideally when it's in full screen mode. Once you do this and walk 10 to 15 feet away from the object, it should start focusing on it. One more sub-example of this POI shot. Let's say that I wanted to focus on this light, but I wanted to focus on the top of the light. As before, let's walk up to the light and set the location to be the same as where I'm standing. I can then walk away, but the Osmo is focused on the bottom of the light. To shift to the top of the light, touch the screen, and auto frame will let you adjust the altitude of where it is focused. Notice that the closer you are to the object you are focused on, the slower that the altitude will change. Now, as I walk around, Osmo does a really nice job at maintaining framing and focus at the top of this light. In our second shot, we're going to have the Osmo follow someone, myself, on rollerblades holding an iPhone. I'm going to set the Osmo up on a tripod to start, but, could it, but it could have been held in someone's hands just as well. As before, I'm going to assume that you have your iPhone connected to your Osmo and you have auto frame successfully running.
For this to work, we're going to take advantage of AutoFlightLogic's Airspace feature. If you want to learn more about how to use Airspace, in particular with your Phantom 3, 4, or Inspire 1, you can watch the Airspace video or read more about it in Flight School. For us to do this shot, I'm going to need one other iPhone, and I'm going to connect these via Airspace. For those that are familiar with Airspace, there are typically two types of Airspaces, peer-to-peer -peer or network. Peer-to-peer -peer airspace interferes with Osmo's Wi-Fi connection, so we have to use the network airspace. We're going to create the network airspace in AutoFrame, and then invite the other iPhone. Let's start by creating that airspace in AutoFrame, and then sending the invite to the other iPhone. Tap on airspace, then enter airspace, then create new airspace. I can then send the invite to my other phone. Tap on continue, and then I'm going to use messaging to send this invite to my other phone. I'm going to enter in the cell phone number from my other phone and send the message. The network airspace has been created and is waiting approval from the other iPhone. I'll switch over to my iPhone where I'll receive the text message. I'm going to tap on that message link. This will open a browser window where I can tap on enter airspace on that phone. I'm going to accept the invite with Autopilot, but I could accept it with Airspace or even Autoframe. And now if I swap back to my original iPhone connected to the Osmo, you can see that this new iPhone has been connected in Airspace. And now as I head out on my rollerblades, and don't make fun of my roller skating, Osmo will automatically track my movements as I skate back and forth. Realize again that Osmo will do better if I'm 15 to 20 feet or more away from the Osmo, but you can see that it does a pretty good job of independently tracking my actions uh, no matter where I go. Let's add in another person who is going to be riding a bicycle. I'm going to send him the invite and he's going to open it up in the Airspace app. Once he's logged on and I select the second iPhone, I can easily switch between tracking me to tracking him, and now I can send him off and AutoFrame will track him on the bicycle. We got off the blades and bicycle to show how easy it is to switch between Osmo focusing on him to focusing back on me. By tapping on the three lines in the top right hand corner, AutoFrame will display all active devices. If I switch between him and me, AutoFrame immediately shifts focus. Note that if you select both or more items, AutoFrame will try to have the Osmo keep both or all items in the shot. One more shot. Let's bring in a quad. I'm going to connect the iPhone that I was using as an airspace object to my Phantom 3. If the iPhone is in airspace and it is also connected to the Phantom 3, it will add the Phantom 3 to airspace as well. We're now focused on capturing the quadcopter from the Osmo. The flight path of the Phantom 3 is completely up to you. You can fly in engaged autonomous mode, for example orbits or waypoints, or just fly freely. The quad does not have to be engaged in autopilot to work. As of now, DJI's SDK does not allow for digital zooming on the screen. However, you can always zoom to see your quad more clearly in post or fly closer to the Osmo, but please be careful. I hope you enjoy the power that AutoFrame provides and can you continue to use it alongside the other AutoFlight Logic products. Until the next video, have fun.